Okay, y'all, so let's talk about comparison. Um, I did the video on this a few weeks ago. Not the video, but I did a post on comparison a few weeks ago, just giving a rough draft of how I compared myself a lot growing up. And I'm not talking about it in the usual way that we are accustomed to talking about comparison. I'm talking about um, me because I had low self-esteem and I didn't know who I was. I spent a lot of my time as a, as a teenage girl. Um, it started as a little girl, but then it really progressed and became greater when I became a teenager. And I started comparing everything from the way that I looked to the way that my eyes shook to the way that they crossed to the, the pale, fair, white skin that I have. I, I compared every inch of myself and I always came up short because I wanted my eyes to stop shaking. I wanted these things to be done. Like I, I would literally sit and I would look at the girls around me, my peers, um, and I and I'm like, just God, why, why did I have to be born like this? You know what I mean? Because it's like when you're already being picked on, when you're already being teased, when you're already being bullied, you, you become extremely self-conscious. It's extremely self-conscious. Like every little thing, every little word, every little comment bugs you. So you begin to look at yourself in the mirror and it's like you begin to see what they are saying about you. It's not like it's actually there. Or that it actually is a problem. It's just they've gotten, these words have gotten so far off into our noggins that we now, every time we look at ourselves, we see what they see. We see ugliness. We see we see disadvantages. We see um, errors. We see mistakes. We see all of these things. If, if like in my case, they, why do your eyes shake so bad? Or, or your eyes are crossed or, um, or just saying, oh, your skin is too white. You're too pale. You don't look, you don't look black or you're not black or you're a cracker or something to that sort. That's what I would see when I was looking at myself in the mirror. I didn't see the, the beautiful image of God how he made Janissa, I saw what they said about me. And then that became the image that I had for myself. I didn't see the beautiful little girl that my mom and my daddy had, the one that they would kiss and love on. I saw what everyone else was saying about me. I saw the Snickers. I saw, and I'm in and, and Snickers. I don't mean the Snickers candy bar. I mean like the, the, the light little laugh, like the, the menacing laugh that people will do when they're talking about you or, or, or trying to belittle you or make you feel less of yourself. Um, I saw the looks, I saw the stares, people literally just standing like deadlocked in position, just staring at me and my sisters, like, what are y'all as though we were objects? So all of those things, um, affected me and caused me to compare myself so much. Uh, like I said, in the post, I didn't like it. And it, and, and you know, the thing about comparison is this. No matter how long you sit there and compare, I wish I had a timetable to just show me the wasted amount of years, minutes, hours, and seconds that I spent comparing myself. I would take books, y'all. I would take magazines. I've always loved magazines. I would take magazines and just stare at the girls who didn't look like me, who weren't albinos. Um, I would stare at them and be just mesmerized and say, why don't I look like why don't I look like that? I wish I looked like that. And no matter how much how much I stared at their images, when I look back at myself, I still look like this. And that tortured me. That 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 pained me. That pained me because I'm like, God, why couldn't I be like that? Maybe my life would be a lot easier. Actually, it would be a lot easier if I if I had darker hair. If I had melanated skin, if I didn't have nystagmus, if my eyes didn't cross, I would be okay. I would be beautiful. I would be something. I wouldn't be picked on. I wouldn't be teased. I wouldn't be anything that is considered ugly or, or, or just outrageous. I would be something. I would be who I, you know, felt like I should be. So I, 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 I would literally just like to see that, like the amount of time that I wasted. Cause I wasted a lot of time doing that y'all, a lot of time. And like I said, it, it started within those preteen years 
and then oh my gosh it just transferred and turned into something ugly so because i spent so much time comparing myself because i had low self-esteem because of those things when you compare yourself you open yourself up to a lot of things to doing a lot of things um thinking a lot of things about yourself all those things that you would normally do if you were confident and happy with who you were so basically you're just open to anything because it's it's almost like you're in this cell and and the first person that comes to you and says hey i have a way to get you out you're like okay i'm going with you it doesn't care you don't matter i mean it doesn't matter who that person is it doesn't matter anything about their profile their background history you none of that matters you, you just want to get out of this cell so you're like okay I'm, I'm ready to go i don't i don't care about your name i don't care about how old you are shoot it could be a baby a, a newborn baby walking up to you in, in a in a, a carrier seat saying hey i can get you out with my rattle and you're like okay let's go baby i'm like literally that's just the 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 grave description of how comparison and low self-esteem and, and things of that nature can get you to it's like you you just literally are just in a destitute state like it doesn't matter who what you're you're willing to experience it you're willing to try it you're willing to go out and do it even when you know what can happen to you if you do it even when you know the consequences, that's the word I'm looking for. Even when you know the consequences of your actions, you still do it anyway. And for me, like I told y'all, I started going and trying to literally paint my body darker with self tanning lotions. Now I didn't have the money to pay for it. <clears throat> the expensive ones, the more expensive tanning lotions, but I will go to the dollar store and I'm in there buying these bottles. Now I'm having my allowance. This is the money that uh, my my parents have have felt I deserve to use for my own leisure because of you know how well I'm doing in school, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But the only thing I can think to treat myself with, not hey let me go buy me a pair of shoes, not let me go you know get me some sh some uh, clothes that I've been wanting. No, I'm saving up my money for self tanning lotion self tanning lotion not hair bows not hair ties not a dvd or vhs but i'm i'm literally out here saving up my allowance so that i can go to the dollar store and buy self tanning lotion so that my skin can be darker and then i i go home and i'm applying this stuff and i'm getting frustrated because typically you know with dollar stores the products that they have aren't as uh, as 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 potent as the actual the real deal you know that they sell in like the major drug stores and things like that it's normally a little glitch or something involved in them so these self tanning lotions that i was buying um they weren't true to form you know they they weren't really tanning the way that they were supposed to tan which is why i'm guessing they were at the store so i was getting frustrated because i'm like i'm supposed to be bronze i, I need a bronzish look to my skin like and I was getting so frustrated because I couldn't get that look. So I'm like, ah, like what? Why is nothing that I'm trying to do work working? Like, why? What what? What is this? Like, I'm I'm saving up my money. This is what I can afford to buy these self-tanning lotions. And that was not working. I was like I said, literally putting it on my skin and it was coming out just as clear as day, as though I had just put like baby oil or something on my skin. Frustrated. So plan B, now keep in mind with us having no melanin as albinos or people with albinism, um, we have to be careful when, careful when we are in the sunlight just as much as anyone else. But because we don't have any melanin, we definitely have to make sure that we are taking the necessary precautions to ensure that um, our skin is protected from the sun's UV rays with sunscreen and things of that nature. So this is something that my mama has already gone over with me from a, a child on up. So I know exactly, again, consequences. I know the consequences. I know what can happen to me um, potentially developing um, horrible uh, sunburns and things like that. I know what can happen to me if I go out in the sun and I'm not protected, if I stay out there, especially for a long period of time, I know all this. I know the consequences. I know the results of my actions won't be good if I go out there in the sun, but I'm so desperate. I'm, I'm so big on comparing myself. I'm, I'm, I'm so stuck on low self-esteem that I go take a chair 
and I go sit it directly in the middle of the backyard of, of my house. And I sit there in the sun and I say, I'm tanning today. And I don't care about anything else. I don't care about my, my skin safety. I don't care about my protection. Um, I'm just worried about getting darker so that I won't be picked on anymore. So that when I look in the mirror, I will like what I see. So I do this. And my mom saw me once one day. She was like, why are you doing that? Why are you sitting directly in the sun? And I lied. Oh, mom, I was just, you know, sitting here, you know, whatever. Just, you know, whatever. But really, what I was doing was torturing myself. By any means necessary, I was going to have darker skin. By any means necessary. By any means necessary. Even if it meant getting sunburned. And I did. But guess what? I went on because I said, I'm determined to be darker and, and, and my skin never tanned and it never tanned. The only thing it did was develop sunburn and thank God that it wasn't um, severe sunburn. It was sunburn that, you know, if it, with medications and like things like aloe vera and things like that would go away after so many days. But I'm just, I, I'm, I'm drawing this picture for you so that you can see the grave state that I was in with comparison. And I want you to know that I identify with you because who in their right mind would intentionally go and get sunburned just for approval from others? Who in their right mind would intentionally, not unintentionally, you intentionally go and get sunburned? You intentionally choose to use money as a kid and y'all know how important allowances are when you are a kid. You know how important it is because this is your time to finally buy what you want. And you take your money to go and buy self-tanning lotion to darken your skin. You don't go and buy your favorite t-shirt, your favorite cup, your favorite snack. You go and buy self-tanning lotion so that you can become darker. Then you get frustrated because that doesn't work. So then you move, you take it up a notch and you start sitting out in the sun to literally burn yourself for a look, for approval? Are you kidding me? Who in their right mind does that? Who? Other than someone who has low self-esteem, so they spend their time comparing themselves all day to people because they don't know who they are. And when you are like that, you are open game for anything. You are willing to try anything. Nothing is off the table. Nothing is off the table. You are willing to do what it takes to fit in, to be happy with you. See, I knew I couldn't, when it came to my eyes with the stagmus and with them crossing strabismus, I knew I had to be a little bit more careful there because it wasn't going to be as much of an easy fix as my skin. So I did what I felt was smart. And to do, I felt, well, if I just cry and pray and ask God, he'll do it. My eyes will stop shaking. They won't cross. After praying, three minutes, <laughs> I said, well, that's a bust. That's not going to work. <laughs> so I go to my mom. And I talked to her about LASIK eye surgery. Now, as I've always done in the past, I'm going to do this disclaimer right now. In no way am I saying that going and getting eye surgery to enhance your vision or anything like that is wrong. No, that's what it's there for. It's, it's there for your needs, your visual needs. But for me, the problem was that it wasn't for me to enhance anything of of just for myself but it was for me to enhance my approval or my beauty or my um self-worth when it came toward those who talked about me those who belittled me those who teased me those who bullied me it wasn't for me it was for them and that's what my mom told me she was like yeah you know me and your dad we will stand behind whatever you want to do but Y'all know y'all hate when mama says, but why she got to say, but why can't she just say yes? Why she got to say, but just say, yeah, just, just say, we'll, we'll support you and go on from there. Why you got to say, but 
Always button. Why? Why you gotta say but? But mama said, don't you think that that will take away from the beautiful way that God made you to be? And you know, after she says, but she got to follow it up with the and, right? And you have to make sure that you're not doing it for other people because people are going to continue to talk about you. You see, if you get your, you get your eyes straightened and, oh, you know, that's, that's solved and over with, they're going to find something else to talk about. So you have to make sure that before you go into this process, before you choose to do this thing, which is inherently good, you have to make sure for you, you have to do a heart check. You have to figure out why you want to do it. Is it literally for you to just enhance your vision so that you can see better? Or is it for any, meeny, miny, mo? Who is it for? And then she sent me away. And I was like, ugh. She made me think. She made me go back to the drawing board. And she opened up my mind so much that I had to say to myself, wow, I had never considered God. I never had considered what he would have to say about this. Because before I went to my mom, I had went through a horrible, horrible summer where I've been picked on all that summer, pretty much my eyes, my ears, my nose, my skin, everything, just being an albino period. I, you, I was just that. And so um, that last breaking moment for me was the fact that I was sitting across from some girls who were talking about my eyes. They were talking about my eyes, uh, how they crossed and shook. And so that that same evening, if not that next day, I went to my mama in the kitchen. I still remember it. She was washing dishes. I was standing behind her. And I came to her and I told her what I wanted to do. And she laid that on me. And it changed my mindset forever. And she didn't know why i well she knew why i was asking but i didn't tell her why you know as kids we go up to our parents and we're like we ask them a question but we don't really expect them to know why we are asking what we're asking them as a mother she knew and i i just love the way that she handled it because she didn't try to pull me out on the carpet she didn't try to be like ah well you you just want to do this because so and so and xyz she addressed it head on, but she let me know without letting me know that she knew why I was asking the question. And that is why I say she sent me away thinking because I hadn't considered God and I hadn't considered myself or my self-worth because again, I didn't know who I was. I had been searching, 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 searching for Janessa for the past seven eight years just searching for myself in magazines searching for myself outside of where I was searching for myself anywhere trying to see who I was trying to get a temporary fix for the internal pain that literally had me crying heavy tears heavy heavy tears I was so burdened down and only people who have been there can relate because when you've been there you've been there and that's not a that's not a happy place that's not a place where you would even want your enemy to be at that is just the lowest of the low low on the self-esteem on the self-esteem um grade it's 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 low it's low so that's where I was. And from that moment on, I began to pray and ask God. And, and, and that is where the advocacy and, and things like this, no melanin was birthed. So I said all of that to say that I know where you are. I've been there. I have been there. I wouldn't even look at people. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't even look at people. Outside of my mama and my daddy and my, my immediate family. I wouldn't even look at people directly in the face when I would speak to them because if you have nystagmus, then you know your eyes shake and then you might not have them shaking for a minute and then they may start shaking again and you can't control it. You really can't control it because your eyes are trying to focus. So I would, when they would start shaking, if someone was talking to me, I would look to the side, look down, look off, 
hoping that they wouldn't catch that my eyes were shaking. And I developed that into such a habit that even sometimes now I still catch myself doing it. I'm like, wait, why are you looking to the side? Look at them. Yeah, my eyes are shaking back and forth. But what, what, do, what do I care that they have a problem with that? That's who I am, that's a part of me. They're gonna shake. What are you saying? So just let me know what you're saying. I don't, I don't, I don't need to know about my eyes shaking or anything like that. Just look at me. And sometimes they'll look off to the side because maybe they don't know how to take it, but that's not on me, that's on them. I can't help that my eyes do this. And I know it takes a minute to get to that point. That's why I, 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 I laid all of that out for you in the beginning so that you can know that all of this, none of this was, oh, I woke up like this. None of this was self-made, this was God-made. This was God made. When I went back to God, when I went back to my roots, when I went back to him and he painted everything out for me, then the process to healing began. It was a process. It wasn't a snap of a finger and boom, I was this confident girl who's ready to take over the world. No, it took some time. It took some time. It took some time. My 20s, I was reflecting on this the other day. I'm 29 now, I'll be 30 in a few days. Um, this decade was, I, I, I was, as I was in prayer, I told God, this was the decade of me warring, warring against who I used to be, where I was versus where you are calling me to and where you want me to be. Because I, the previous decade before my 20s, which was my, my teen years and things like that, that was the, that was the period of me trying to figure out who I was. I hated who I was outwardly. And um, I spent a lot of time focusing on trying to pull away from that. Then into my 20s, God took me to this point where he was showing me who I was, always who I was to him and bringing me into that category. But then this war began between, no, you still should be like that versus going into where God wants me to be. And then this, this next chapter of my life is just fully being there. Because again, it's a process. It's not an easy cakewalk, walk in the park. It's, it's not that. So take your time and don't be hard on yourself. But in the meantime, what I learned to do, affirmations, what God says about you, scriptures of affirmations, and I need to one day um, sit down and, and compile these so I can share them with you all affirmations of what God says about you. Your His word has to go against the words that you have spoken about yourself as well as the words that have been spoken over you by others, those word curses. We have to go against those with the word of God and surround yourself with positive thinking, speaking people. Even if you have to just uh, declutter your Instagram, declutter your Facebook, rearrange who you hang out with as, as friends and things like that so that you can solely ingest positivity you need to do that because i had to do that you can't expect to grow if you continue hanging around weeds and thorns and thistles you have to put yourself in the right element the right space where you can grow and god's word was the main thing for me prayer was second and then also having my sisters, especially my my two sisters who have albinism, I was able to greatly lean on them because they had walked this walk before I had walked the walk. Um, so that helped, having my parents, my family, all of those things helped. And removing yourself from relationships, I don't care if it's, if it's romantic or platonic, and platonic meaning non-romantic, you just your, your friends, your best friends, even removing and deleting those relationships out of your life. If they taunt you and pick on you, or if you see instances and situations where they will get with other people and talk about you and laugh at how you, the way that you look or, or, or make jokes about you being an albino or about your eyes, that's not cool. And you don't need to be around people who, who will do that to you or feel comfortable doing that to you. Because in no way, form or fashion will anyone who loves you ever sit and make a joke about something that is as serious as your medical condition. No way possible, no way possible. So doing some of those things, that, that's just some house tips, some, some, some house cleaning tips that you should do for your life. It may not be easy. And again, it's not easy. It wasn't easy for me. 
that's why I said this this decade of my 20s was literally the the decade of me going through this process. It was a, it was a tug of war because when you've been in a mindset for so long, the devil doesn't want you to move from that. And he will do anything and everything within his power to keep you right where he had you the whole time because you have to keep in mind all of this surrounds him and his purpose in making sure that we don't see who we were created to be. That is why God told me when I was a teenager at the between the ages of 17 and 19, I believe that in John chapter nine, we were created this way on purpose for a purpose. And that is to do great things with little to no melanin in our hair, skin and eyes. He gave me that to prepare me for this next phase, this next decade of my life, my twenties, where Satan was going to do everything within his power to defeat me and stop me from believing that about myself. So I say the same to you. Um, this isn't just what, sounds it's a good slogan or a good hashtag no this is what i believe this is what i stand on this is what i live by and i know that you're going to make it and like i said at the beginning of this video if you are comparing yourself if you have low self-esteem this network of advocacy for people with albinism i am not the only one there are several others out there who are doing a phenomenal work and making sure that um they encourage and uplift others within our community who have albinism and i want you to get accustomed to those networks get on the no melanin page and 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 scroll through and see so many get on there and share their their beauty their thoughts their wisdom their their knowledge get on there and surround yourself with people like that online we're always on social media so why can't you find the time to fi follow someone who is speaking positivity and parents you control your children's social media. So you make sure that they are doing these things and even outside of the home, monitor who they're hanging out with. Even if it's family members, no, you cannot walk up to my child and make negative comments about their eyes, about their skin, about the color of their hair. No, you cannot speak to them in a tone that belittles them, that is that is that is bullying, that is, you know, doing things that are working in in, in a direct contrast to what you as the parent are trying to do in your child's life even at school it goes the same for teachers the principal faculty other students around you are in charge of your child so make sure that you are covering them at all times it's not easy but just as it is with this walk in salvation, I liken it to that. One of my favorite scripture, scriptures is in John um, chapter 16, verse 33. Jesus told the disciples, this is prior to him going to the cross. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Salvation is not an easy walk. It's not an easy walk. So that means nothing else in our lives will be an easy walk. But when we put our faith, our hope, and our trust in Jesus Christ, the one who gave his life for our sins, you can know that you're going to be okay. He, he took all of that on on the cross so that we could have the victory, so that we could have our confidence so that we could have peace, so that we could have joy, so that we could have happiness. Not in temporal things on this earth. Because, hey, I have my moments. I have my things that make me happy. You know, like, for example, these Doritos make me happy. But this is temporary. That's, that's temporary compared to a consistent happiness, an eternal happiness that cannot be taken away from me given the situation or the circumstance. When you have your hope and your trust in Jesus Christ and you know who you are and whose you are, can't nobody come and take that away from you because that's just yours. That's yours. And so I encourage you to develop that relationship with Jesus Christ because there's no way that I would be where I am today without him. That's why I got to mention it. That's why I have to say it. If I was self-made, if I came... If I came up here like this by myself, I would have said that, but I didn't. I did not. I don't know about anybody else, but I, I'm going to tell you the truth. None of this was possible without God. None of this was possible without God. None of it. None of it. None of it. So I encourage you um, to walk with God. I encourage you to affirm yourself and only say what God says about you. I encourage you to remove yourself from toxic situations. And I encourage you, I encourage you to 
love you the way that you are. No melanin and all, nystagmus and all, strabismus and all. Love you for the way that you are because you are exactly the way God wanted you to be. Remember, you and I, I should have said this, you and I, I <laughs> pointed to myself, you and I, me and you, baby, we were born this way on purpose, for a purpose, and that is to do great things with little to no melanin in our hair, skin, and our eyes. So go forward and do great things because that is what you were born to do. Talk to y'all later. Bye.